edition of Bike Fit Tuesdays. Today's episode, we are covering ultra distance bike fit for AJ. He's gonna be racing the TCR this summer, if it's still on. So we're gonna be looking at his bike position over a very, very long distance. You gotta do 300K on this indoor trainer. <laughs> yeah, just to get some sort of uh, appreciation for what my legs are gonna go through. <laughs> Literally. So you've done a few pretty cool events in yep. the past, haven't you? First person in the UK to double Everest. Yeah, which without, is absolutely uh, without absolutely absurd. <laughs> How many hours did that take? Uh, it was something like 46 or 47 hours. Yeah, I did tra Transatlantic Way in 2018. Um, that was my first ever ultra race. I uh, finished 20th in that, which was a great result for me. Um, I didn't even know if I was going to finish that, so yeah, I decided to uh, to try and do it and did a lot better than I thought I was going to do. I did All Points North last year as well, where I had to scratch because of bike fit. My fit was wrong on the bike. Mm -hmm. I used a completely different bike to what I've got at the moment. Um, that's another story, really. Um, but then for this year, I want to do the, trans the Transcontinental. So as long as that goes ahead, um, I'll be racing from Brest to Burgas uh, in Bulgaria. That's Approximate distance? About four and a half thousand kilometers, okay. something like that. Um, so, and that's the kind of riding that I do. So what we've got to solve today? Okay, so the main things for me are my right leg um, doesn't feel properly connected, connected to my body. So I've got this right hand calf, the right hand side of my calf. When I pedal, it just feels a little bit like loose. Like, yeah. Like I've got something going on with between my left and my right leg. My left leg doesn't really hurt that much. There's no issues other than I've got a small pain on the top of my knee. Why are you happy with your shoes? Pain in my feet, numbness in my, in my feet. I know, yes. I chose these shoes because firstly they're lacer. So the idea was that if I'm having a bit of a, a day where my feet are hot or whatever, I can just undo them and um, just to let some air in. Again, that was the reason for getting the knit ones. Um, SPD because easy to walk on. Again, ultra distance, you know, you want to be walking in and out of shops and stuff all the time and it just makes things a bit easier. The one downside with this though is because they're nylon sole, I do feel like they flex too much. And I think that's, you know, a bit uncomfortable for me certainly anyway. It just doesn't feel right when I'm stamping on the pedals and whatnot. So, um, and I don't know if that's something to do, hopefully James is going to be able to show me, but at the moment my feet just don't feel I don't, don't feel right at all. The thing I find is that like people people go into a bike shop and they go, oh, and they read all this crap online. Yeah. And they go, oh, they, they, they go, oh, I want to try this on. You know, size 10, they're not size 10, they're size 8 with wide feet. And then they try them on in the shop and they stand up in them, they sit down, they try the shoe on, shoe feels really nice and yeah. soft. They stand up, shoe still feels really nice and soft. Then they go and ride a bicycle, which is not the same as standing or sitting yeah. down believe it or not. Having a soft upper isn't isn't really a very good thing to have because it doesn't offer any stability or support to the foot. Now, in your case, you've got really good feet. There's, you know, there's quite a lot of stability in your feet. There's not a huge amount of arse drop. There's yeah. not really any pronation or supination occurring in them. So I don't think the shoe's a terrible choice for you, but you're a bit of a rarity in that respect. Yeah. Most people I see in here pronate quite heavily and having a knitted shoe or a woven shoe, ugh just creates all sorts of problems. And furthermore, when you put arch support into it, most orthoses or most um, uh, footbeds that you fit for, for cycling tend to um, slightly rely on the structure of the shoe in order to offer right. support. I know the G8 that we're gonna try today, just because I always do, um, certainly does rely on the, on the support of the shoe um, to a certain degree. And you know, if the shoe's got no support in itself, you're not gonna get much support from the yeah. footbed either. So you put an air bars on. How very observant. Oh, it's a pretty standard thing for ultra racing, right? Yeah. Why? Is it just another hand position or is it quicker or what? It's all about the hand position for me. I only use them for being quicker very, very limited amount of time. The the big thing for me is changing up that position on my you know my neck, my shoulders, my arms. Being able to have somewhere else to kind of just rest your hand and just have a bit of a break for a little while. Um, it's a really big thing, particularly when you know you've been on the bike all day, and it's like you just want to, you just want to get off the bike, but you don't want to stop. You know, it's that kind of just being able to rest a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, that just takes a lot of pressure off your body. Um, certainly for me, they they do have the benefit of being faster, obviously, if they're set up right and they're not causing other problems. But yeah, for me, it's more that position. So in a normal, that normal ultra race. <laughs> <laughs> they're normal things. Yeah, because yeah. they're normal things. How long do you actually spend in the in the that position? Surprisingly, a long amount of time. And I don't know if it's just again because of wanting somewhere to rest. But you know, Transatlantic Way. Um, there were quite a few roads, despite them being up and down. 
you know, I'd sit in them for two hours at a time maybe, depending on how comfortable and whatever I was feeling at the time. But it's quite easy to sit there, as long as your position is comfortable, it's, it is quite easy to sit there for hours at a time. Um, it does take some practice though, and you know, my first time trying to ride like that with them um, is a nightmare because you get blown around a little bit and you, know, you get a bit nervous using them. But once you've got that dial and you've got it into your head that actually it is quite a nice position to be in, they, they do work really well. We found in Australia on Chris's bike, he had them, I didn't, and I wish I had some. Yeah. Uh, it was another position to strap stuff to as well. So if yeah, you want to carry yeah. like a bottle, you can put a bottle in the middle. And like manufacturers really now, only recently really this year have started to produce, or maybe last year have started to produce bags that you can actually fix to aero bars. Perfect. Because you know, normally to be able to get a bar bag or something on here with your aero bars and your Garmin and your lights and all that kind of stuff, it gets a little bit cluttered and a bit difficult. Whereas now if you've got a, you've got a bag that just fixes onto here, um, it does become a lot more um, easier to kind of access and, and throw on and off the bike. Comes off. Comes off. Rich one. That was a rich one. So this is a live feed of his ass. Yes. Nice. One thing that we might want to consider with you. Now, th this is uh, what a lot of fitting calls body mass representation, which basically is an understanding of your weight distribution between the two wheels. And the number, the, the dot on your shoulder blade represents our centre of mass. Yeah. And at the moment, it's a little bit further back than arguably some might like it to be a lot of people might you know look for that dot to hit the line now one thing i will say is that given that you're doing extreme distances i think we can call it extreme distances having the saddle slightly further back might not necessarily be a bad thing because it loads you through the pelvis a little bit more and offloads the hand yeah, yeah. the hands and neck and the shoulders which i would say are probably more susceptible to discomfort than than the saddles especially given you told me you don't really get any saddle problems no, absolutely, yeah. so the, the, the and this is where Saddle setback starts to influence the fit. Saddle setback influences a number of factors. It influences your weight distribution, yeah. where your weight is distributed between the two wheels. So thus, how much pressure you're going through the hands or the fit or, or the saddle. But also uh, influences your hip function. So the further forward we run it, the more pressure you might have on your hands, but also might open up the hips. Yeah. So it's this, and, and it also influences saddle height. Right. So it's this kind of juggling act, it's a balancing act of, of offloading those three elements or considering those three elements of fit. It's, there isn't a rule for saddle setback. I actually find myself a lot of the time not really altering it much okay. um, unless I absolutely need to. But uh, I guess what I'm getting at here is that there is, for you, there's a specific need to yeah. potentially run it slightly further back because it's going to offload your hands and shot. I think the other thing, I wonder whether it, it looks a little bit long. So we'll take the cleat further back. Uh, which is kind of what I almost always do, um, but with with Alex's um, fit, it's even more important because taking the cleat further back reduces the length of the lever of the foot, which tends to put less strain through the ankle complex, through the calf muscles, and that's through the knees, the hips, the calves. So, actually, we found by setting cleat location further back, you actually improve your interaction with the saddle as well. So, you know, the, it, it's all it's all linked. But for longer distance stuff, there's a very, very strong argument, argument yeah. for taking the cleat further back. Most of the top finishers in the RAM or are finishing with a mid-foot cleat location. It definitely feels a lot more stable. Um, and like my toes, that I don't feel as much pressure. Well, James, someone says, stop touching your face, James. From Thomas Thomas. He stole my surname for his first name, idiot. So one of the things that um, is, becomes a problem with fitting an aero bar to a road bike is that the reach when you're in the, ex in the extensions you want to come on down for yes. and it's 20 miles further out, is that you end up getting quite a lot of tension yeah. through here and through the, through the lats, through the triceps. So what I would always recommend someone do, if they're going to do some long distance stuff, the only aero bar actually I can think of now, and he found these the other day, is a pro missile which has a, an armrest that moves independently of the bar clamp because what happens is you end up with it being too extended so essentially what's what, what we're so simulating here oh because you're limited by the position you've already put the handlebar in yeah. rather than on a tt bike yeah. you can just move them around yeah. you can move it around yeah. exactly these have the most amount of adjustment in terms of extension and reach that's that's actually the, the major problem reach is almost always going to cause you issues uh, whereas excessive drop, less so. Because he's doing an ultra and he's going to be riding for a very long time, does that mean the front end should be higher? Not necessarily. Uh, so probably, we've, got, we've got it at like 600 watts and we're sitting here <laughs> having a conversation. <laughs> so not necessarily. The front end 
the front end being higher doesn't necessarily equal less pressure on the hands. Um, one of the, the most common issues I come up, up against is people making the reach too long because they want a stem on their resembles a baby's arm and um, then they, have, they, they don't have enough handlebar drop. So actually, when you, have, when you have the front end too high, you disengage certain musculature in your back which aids in, in sustaining your torso angle. Um, as you take it too low, that also that musculature also starts to disengage. So there's an element of finding a sweet spot about it. But you know, we can simulate this with, with Alex here. In the, if we go 10 mil down or even 20 mil down, it doesn't really make the blindest bit of difference. It's when you start going quite a long way down that you start falling in the front of the bike. Furthermore, as you, oh, as you start to come up, you, you'll have the same sort of you have the same sort of issues. So, and this is why we work on a jig because you can get a feel for where this, this sweet spot is. Because you start coming up, not only does it feel like Mary Poppins, <laughs> but you know, it's like it's not, there's a little bit more pressure on the hands. So 10 mil reduction in saddle height, 11 mil. 20 mil in setback, 7 mil reduction in drop as a result of the drop in the saddle height, 25 mil reduction in reach. But I think the most, the biggest changes we've made have been on the shoes, correct? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got a G8 footbed in there, just for a change. Um, sort of thought I'd switch it up a bit. Got some heel wedging in place. The shoes have changed completely. Um, they've gone from, like I said before, my foot, my, my right leg felt really disconnected and my foot um, on the right hand side felt very disconnected. Now it just feels like you would imagine a shoe needs to feel in that it's... So the leg problem is fixed by the shoe? Completely. 100% gone. So now you're going to win, uh, win the TCR? Yeah. <laughs> if I do, it's going to be because of your uh, aero bike packing video. You're going to put a tail fin on? I'd like a tail fin, yeah. yeah. Did you get one? Yeah. yeah. It's the bollocks. Yeah. I've been gushing. I, I was taking the piss out of him in, in the USA uh, about his tail fin, most because he had these pannier bags on the side of it. But it was the best thing ever, wasn't it, in Vietnam? Yeah, really you just get all of your stuff, dump it in, and roll the top up. Well, that's why I want it. <laughs> Brilliant. It's not because of the air, though. It's pretty much because it's going to be easy just to grab stuff out of it and just yeah. throw the lot in. Plus, with the gravel and stuff on TCR, it's not going to move anywhere. So another bike fit done and dusted. You're still open for business, right? We're doing a special um, COVID-19 bike fit price. It's a 0% discount.